arteries okay so the placenta is lucky it has double blood supply material side the spiral gets the minority of it the sedium and the umbilical arteries supplies the chorion which is the majority of the placenta towards the fetal side umbilical vein gets out from the placenta it is the left umbilical vein only the right fails just before the left umbilical vein enters the umbilical cord it gets upwards or anywhere going to the umbilicus getting through the umbilicus upwards and backwards going towards the liver it will give me a branch here to the portal sinus <coughs> the portal sinus it is actually its name is who can remember it dr huda lips portal vein yes what portion of it umbilical portion umbilical. umbilical and the majority of the blood goes in the first shunt which is the ductus venosus ductus venosus is outside the liver okay only this portion which is the umbilical going to the umbilical portion of this portal going inside the liver supplying the sinusoids of the liver now this ductus venosus is outside the liver goes directly to the ivc which is exactly just just under the diaphragm just before the ivc getting inside the right atrium here we have a valve this valve here this is the superior vena cava this is the inferior vena cava and there's a valve we call it who can remember Eustachian valve. Eustachian valve. Eustachian valve. Okay. So the blood here, it's supposed to carry from the IVC the non-oxygenated blood, but the ductus venosus is very strong, full of oxygenated blood. It makes it 100% oxygenated. So the oxygenated blood goes here to the right atrium the right atrium supposed to give the whole blood to the left atrium through the foramen oval what helps this number one this it is a very high speed blood here that goes from this opening the opening of ivc straight forwards to the interatrial septum where is the uh, foramen oval some of the blood will get down to the ventricle to the right ventricle so what comes from the superior vena cava is an unoxygenated blood that would mix that little blood that goes down to the ventricle and make it mixed and make it mixed but most of the blood is going to the left ventricle here the foramen oval opens towards the left ventricle that's why when you are visualizing or scanning the heart for chamber view you could think that the right atrium is bigger than the left atrium but actually not this is because of the pheromone oval that opens towards the left ventricle they are the same but the right side of the heart its the pressure is little higher than the left side one so this also keeps the bloodstream going in the same direction here towards the left ventricle the left ventricle here let's stop what happens to the blood the mixed blood here it will goes through the pulmonary duct that goes in the pulmonary main pulmonary artery to give a left and right branch to the both lungs pulmonary arteries but as you know that the lungs are not functioning yet so it doesn't need that much blood it's only about maximum 10 to 12 percent of the blood in the pulmonary where is the mojito goes it goes through the third shunt the second shunt was 
the foramen oval. The third chunk is the ductus arteriosus. The ductus arteriosus joins the aorta after the arch, finishing giving branches to the to neck and the brain, which are the left carotid and innominate and subclavian. And now it joins it at the beginning of the descending aorta. Now it makes this blood here. This is mixed, okay? Mixed, mixed, mixed. Now here, all the blood in the descending aorta is mixed. What is going to the head and neck is the only part that, is, that has full oxygenated blood. Now the blood goes down, down, and gives branches everywhere in the body, to the gut, to the kidneys, to the iliac vessels, internal, external iliac, and each internal iliac give me an artery we call, we call it umbilical artery. So we have two umbilical arteries from the two internal iliac arteries that goes right and left to the bladder and then ascend up, ascend up, going to the umbilicus to join the umbilical vein going back to the placenta where it feeds it. Okay? Now, what I have seen on the is that doctor said that the umbilical arteries taking the non-oxygenated blood to the placenta. I can't say this. I would say better the mixed blood. So from where does the chorion take its oxygen and the glucose? Now, the basal layer here, I mean the decidua takes its blood from the spiral arteries, but the majority of the placenta is chorion. It takes the blood from the mixed blood here, okay? But because it is mixed, when there is abnormality in the umbilical artery for unmentioned cause, it will be affected, the chorion will be affected and may lose its function. While the blood here is going to the head and neck from the arch of the aorta, it carries oxygenated blood. Okay. Look here, let's go to some details here. When the blood enters from the IVC to the right atrium, there is a valve that opens, it is in the, at the beginning of the inferior vena cava, or I mean at the end of the IVC, that opens towards the right atrium, we call it Eustachian valve, and I will show it for you, I think I have it, here is it. Sorry, sorry. You see, this is the right atrium. This is the superior vena cava. This is mid-sagittal scanning here at the level of the chest. This is the superior vena cava. This is the inferior vena cava. Okay. And both of them, this gives the blood here, and this gives the blood here to the right atrium. And this is the eustachian valve. Okay. Let's go back. Now when it enters here, the mixed blood now, the blood that comes from the IVC, I mean, it comes from the ductus venosus, it would be mixed with that comes from the superior vena cava, which is an unoxygenated, and it will be full of mixed blood. So the pulmonary blood also, the lungs are supplied with mixed, okay? Now the blood goes down, the blood has a high speed velocity. If it goes in the pulmonary straight, it could make damage to the lung. So the gut creates here what we call it moderator band. Moderator band. You see this phacon, Albaz phacon? Here at the opening of his nostril, there is a bone. And that's, that's the reason they make a very high speed aircrafts. Okay? not to be damaged by the high speed of air that faces it. And this is the idea from here. This is moderator band, and we have the moderator band here that decreases the, the blood velocity that goes to the pulmonary. Okay? And also we have here the pulmonary valve. 
something very important I have forgotten. Uh, just when the ductus venosus starts, there is a regulator valve. Here is it. This regulator valve, it closes when there is overload in the circulation also. This is a very protective mechanism, especially when there is myometrial contraction. What it would do? It would close the blood flow in the ductus venosus and let the whole blood go to the liver sinusoids. So this is first a protective mechanism and this is another eustachian valve and the moderator band. Now, look at this. This is the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle. You see this? This is the band here. It is thin like this. So it doesn't take it from the size and the capacity of the right ventricle. Okay? Did anyone not understanding something so I can discuss it again. Is it clear here? Let's see what would happen if I... Now what is this before I continue? This is umbilical vein. When it passes the liver, so this is the first shot, it goes to the I to IVC, going to the right atrium. What happens if when I close the umbilical cord? I will close two things, the arteries and the vein. When I close the vein, so there is nothing going to ductus venosus. The first thing would happen that the high pressure, which is higher than the left, will decrease. I mean in the right side. So the right and left pressure will be equalized. So here the foramen oval, it is formed of two septums, the primum at the side of the left ventricle and the primum secundum, and the secundum I mean in the other side. So it will be attached to each other, they will close within about one to two months, okay? And the ductus venosus will change into ligamentum venosum that attaches the liver to the anterior abdominal wall from inside. And what would happen to the umbilical vein? It will be a ligament, and we call it ligamentum? Tears. Tears, bravo, ligamentum tears. And what would happen here? There is no pulmonary blood flow to the ductus arteriosus. It will close and it will give me ligamentum arteriosus that supports the heart. Now within one to two months, I mean six to eight weeks, now just after delivery there is breathing. When there is a breathing, what would happen to the what would happen to the alveoli? It will expand by the air and the vessels will be expanded and there will be the breathing process here. So just after delivery or at birth, the pressure in the right side falls down and it will be stable after two months when the foramen oval it closes. Sometimes the foramen oval doesn't close perfectly and there's just very little In the proximal part, it will stay open and will supply the bladder. The other thing here is the bladder. By the superior vesicle vessels, this is the blood supply here. It will stay open. But the distal part is going to change into ligaments because you are closing them. And do it again. Because middle cerebral artery will be affected after a huge damage to the placenta, when the umbilical artery is bad, it means there's a lot of things happens. So you need to check the middle cerebral artery. But 
if there is no signs of anything for the umbilical artery, it, there would be no, no changes in the middle cerebral. Although the IUGR starts why 40% of the placenta villi are not working good, but it wouldn't give me the change on the umbilical artery uh, spectral analysis. Okay? You should be careful. But if there is no bad signs, it's a good one. It's a good one, so there is no change in the arterial circulation. The cerebral artery will be good. I mean, the middle cerebral artery, and no venous damage, no cardiac damage. I don't need to study anything else. But if there are changes on the umbilical arteries, I need to check the middle cerebral artery. If, if the middle cerebral artery is good, so the heart is good, and that is venosus will show no changes, and even the, the umbilical vein will show no changes. Because the umbilical vein, if there are changes, it is wavy and have pulsations, something like this, it means that the cardiac muscle is bad and the heart is already uh, failed. And this is a bad sign that the baby